power. Every woman in this room embodies it, yet we all wear it differently. We get to choose how we get to wear our power. I first found my power at the age of 12 years old. One minute, I was in a mall in Lincoln, Nebraska, <laughs> and the next thing I know, I, bur I booked my first modeling gig, and I was on set. I remember that day so vividly. I was with my mom, we were standing in her car, or sitting, we weren't standing, trust me. <laughs> we were sitting in her car anxiously, waiting to go in, praying to God, thanking him for this opportunity, that if this was the only gig I had ever been given, that I would be so grateful. That day I thought to myself, I can either step up or step out. In that brief moment of uncertainty, I realized that my mother had showered me with so many affirmations and that I deserved to be there. There's my mom, isn't she cute? I think I was about 15 years old there. That was our last job together, or that last job that she traveled with me together. My mother always taught me that confidence was sexy. Whether it sagged, whether it hung over your pants, <laughs> or you had to wear Spanx, confidence was your most alluring possession. To some people, I was too curvy, too tall, too busty, too loud, sometimes too much, but sometimes never enough. Instead of falling into these false accusations of what people called flaws, I used those flaws and I flaunted them in front of the camera. <laughs> and I had every photographer tell me exactly what I already knew after I hit every mark and made every pose, that I was hot. <laughs> I am powerful because I choose to be. At 13 years old, I was signed with a major modeling agency, I was traveling the world, and I was booking big campaigns such as Macy's and Dillard's, and of course, it was a lot of fun at first. The money was great, the recognition was even better, but I soon realized that <coughs> In my early 20s, a pretty face will get you in the door, but it takes a business savvy woman to achieve longevity. Am I right, ladies? At 23, 10 years into the modeling industry, I had realized that, you know, while shooting for a major campaign, I needed to take my business to another level. Yes, she's a pretty face. But what else does she have? She doesn't have any business under her belt. So I was working for my number one retail, my number one Canadian retailer, Additionnel. I approached them to design a size conscious lingerie line, a sexy size conscious lingerie line. Next thing you know, three months later, a contract was written up and signed. I had been trying to convince people for the last five years that I was more than what they thought I was that I could be a pretty face and a boss. I learned quickly that waiting for other people to determine how we should do, think, and act only forfeits our own strength. We have the power to transform and redefine our new normal. And I ain't done yet. <laughs> My first year of marriage, this lesson came in a completely different form. Modeling afforded me the luxury of being able to work a couple days a week and also on my days off, laying around on the couch with my hair pulled up, no makeup on. And my husband would come home from a long day at work and see me in the same position. He would say, what else do you want to do with your life? He challenged me to think outside the modeling box and think about my ambitions in life. Quickly, right after all of the laying around on the couch, my agency of 10 years dropped the whole plus size division. That's right, I was fired. In that moment, I realized that I can't lean on anybody else to determine my future. And that waiting on somebody else is only going to hold me back from being the woman that I can be. 
I wanted in that moment, and I realized that I needed to show up to every role in my life. They say, if you look in the mirror and actually like the person that you're looking at, that you're doing a lot better than most people. I was afforded that luxury at 12 years old of finding my power. But there are so many women who are still feeling insignificant and unworthy and still can't find themselves. And one of the things that's plaguing America is that we're putting women into, into categories and we're doing it by keeping them in labels. I'm in a label because of the number inside of my pants. What label are you all in? See, I was the girl that was told, you'll never be in the pages of magazines, let alone any of the covers. And let me tell you something. I've been on 11 covers in two years. I... <laughs> and I was the first woman my size in the history of Sports Illustrated to grace the cover. I was, thank you, I am really proud of that. I was also selected to be in Forbes 30 Under 30 class of 2016. I also have my own lingerie swim and dress line. Ellen DeGeneres even made me my own custom lingerie. <laughs> I refuse to be told what I'm capable of. I want you to think back to that time where you were once denied your own vision. The fact that you're here means that one conversation and one dialogue actually changed the direction of your life. When you leave here today, I want you to ignite that fire and that conversation in someone else's life. Change the direction of who they think they are and where they think they can go, because everyone in this room is in here for a reason. My name is Ashley Graham, and I am redefining power. Thank you.